Hey bio fans! Anya here from the Biography Wrap, and today we are going to explore the life of an American activist, Aaron Brockovich, through the movie Aaron Brockovich, directed by Steven Soderbergh. The story begins with Aaron Brockovich, a single unemployed mother of three children looking for a job. While driving down the street, she gets hit by another car, and a case is filed. She hires a lawyer, Ed Masary, who tells her that he will make sure they win the case. While in the courthouse, the other lawyer says she might have jumped in front of the car on purpose to get money, and Aaron gets angry, thus losing the case. She desperately starts looking for a job while also trying to contact Ed, who continuously ignores her calls. She goes to his office and asks for a job and says if she doesn't work, then they can fire her. Ed reluctantly agrees and even gives her an advance of $100 so that she can take care of her kids for the weekend. At work, Aaron is given real estate files to sort out. She is surprised to find medical records and asks her coworker for help, but she denies it. Later that day, she goes to pick up her kids from the babysitter, but can't find them and starts panicking. She gets home looking for them and finally sees them with her new neighbor, a biker boy named George. He tells her that the babysitter dropped them off as she had some work, which makes Aaron furious, but thanks George for his help with the kids. He offers to take care of the kids whenever needed, as he has enough money saved and doesn't go to work. Aaron first hesitates, but eventually agrees. While looking at the Pacific Gas and Electric Real Estate contract for purchasing Donna Jensen's house, she finds immunotoxicology reports of Donna and her husband and decides to investigate further. She visits Donna, who tells her that she never put her house up for sale, P.G. Annie approached her for the house. She says she was a little hesitant, but didn't want to hinder P.G. Annie, especially after what they had done for Hinkley. She further tells Aaron that P.G. Annie paid for the whole family's doctor visits from their own pocket. Aaron questions why the company did that, and Donna says it was all because of the chromium. Aaron becomes more curious about it, and she visits a professor and inquires about the different chromium types available. He mentions that hexavalent chromium is highly harmful and highly carcinogenic. Further, he tells Aaron that this form of chromium enters the DNA, thus passing on the diseases to the children. He tells her to visit the county water board to find out which type of chromium Hinkley uses. She goes to the county and digs through the reports and finds out that PGNE had been discharging hexavalent chromium in Hinkley's underground water system. She gets back to the office a week later and finds out that she has been fired. She tries explaining that she had been researching and asking around for the real estate case, but Ed doesn't listen. He offers to find her another job, but Aaron leaves. She gets home to find George trying to fix a leak in her sink. She spots a cockroach gets furious. George tells her to call an exterminator, and she replies that she cannot afford one. Afterwards, she breaks down and confesses she had thought she would be something meaningful in life, and George consoles her. One morning, as Aaron searches for different jobs, Ed shows up at her house and tells her that the professor she contacted left her a message saying that the amount of hexavalent chromium she mentioned could be responsible for the cancers in the Jensen family. He asks her about the cancer story, and Aaron says she will tell him only if he hires her back. Ed reluctantly agrees, and Aaron tells him about how pg &E wants to buy Donna's house, that her husband suffers from Hodgkin's lymphoma, and she suffers from many tumors. He asks to look at the water reports she took from the water board, and Aaron says she wants a raise and benefits, including dental. He gets frustrated but agrees. Aaron shows him the papers. He asks her to get more and leaves. She goes and investigates more from Donna, who is in denial, but soon understands that pg &E lied. Aaron and Ed set up a meeting with Mr. Foyle, a representative from pg &E, who offered the Jensen's $250,000. But, he denies accepting any blame for their medical concerns. Ed is about to leave when Foyle warns them, that they are dealing with a $28 billion corporation. Ed rejoices on hearing the amount and leaves. Later that night, a couple comes to visit her. They introduce themselves as Mandy and Tom Robinson and tell her that they live across the street from the Jensens. They inform her that pg &E bought their house the year before and show her pictures of their birds, who were all born disabled and with tumors. They also tell her that Mandy had suffered five miscarriages, which they now think was related to the chromium. Ed and Aaron visit the Jensens and the Robinsons and tell them that they will not be suing pg &E. Instead, 
they will use this information to get the two families sufficient money to pay for their medical bills and live a comfortable life. Soon, Aaron starts questioning the other residents of Hinkley and figures all of them had various health issues. Aaron meets multiple sick people and kids and asks Ed if they could get the plaintiffs involved. Ed denies and says this case could take a very long time and cause them significant losses. Aaron pesters him and says with a little effort, they will be able to pin PG&E. Ed again denies, but then asks how many they are dealing with. Aaron says she has found reports from 1967, so there might be many more people. Ed says that if she can find all the evidence to back this up, he will take on the case. She first goes to different water sources and collects water samples to test. She also finds a dead frog and takes it with her. Later that night, she gets a call from an unknown number telling her to watch her step and think again. George tries to convince her to quit the job as it has become dangerous. She comments on him not having a job, and in retaliation, he comments on knowing her kids better and leaves. The next day, while at the water board, Aaron asks Scott, the manager there, if he gets paid to keep PG and E's secret and questions how he sleeps at night, knowing that people are dying every single day. After nine months, Aaron and Ed have a party where they introduce people to the case. There she meets a person who works at pg and &E. He tells her all about how the plant works and why the contamination occurred. Aaron tells Ed about it and says the contamination happened because pg and &E skipped a crucial step which involved lining the dirt pond to prevent seeping of the chromium into the water. Ed says he contacted other firms to help him with the case, but they all denied it as they don't think they could win. Aaron gets confused as they have all the proof needed, so Ed explains that they can punish pg and &E Hinkley, not the entire corporation, as they deny knowing any of it. Ed tells her they could use the 400 plaintiffs and the proof Aaron has collected to raise a motion and see what pg and &E does and if it offers a reasonable settlement. Soon, Aaron finds out that one of Donna's tumors turned cancerous and she had to have a complete hysterectomy and a mastectomy to help her survive. Ed and Aaron file the motion and the judge rules in support of them and tells the pg and &E lawyers that they are going to trial. The two parties hold a meeting to decide a settlement amount. The pg and &E offers $20 million which enrage Aaron, and she tells them to think what their spine or uterus should cost and multiply that number by 100. The pg and &E lawyers say the meeting is over and leave. When she gets home that night, George tells her that she has to look for a new job or a new man. Aaron says that she has received respect for the first time in her life, and she is not going to give that up for another man and George leaves. She takes her kids to Hinkley and meets with Pamela, who tells her that she took her kids to the hospital for massive nosebleeds, and they called the CPS on her as they thought she was abusing them. At the office, Aaron gets informed that they have a new partner, Kurt, who is the best lawyer in town. Aaron gets mad as they did all the work and leaves. Later, Ed sends Aaron $5,000 and a car and tells her to cheer up. Kurt tells Aaron that the best approach would be a trial without a jury. Aaron gets upset and argues with Kurt's partner, Teresa, as she talks nonsense. Aaron proves her completely wrong, but is very rude, which upsets Ed. Teresa visits a few homes, but the people don't like her, and one of them tells Aaron that Pamela is telling everyone to get new lawyers. Ed tells Aaron that Kurt realizes his mistake, and they are about to lose the case as the people don't like the idea of binding arbitration. Ed holds a meeting with them and explains everything to them but they don't like his proposal and start leaving, but he convinces them all to stay. After the meeting, Aaron brings almost everyone to agreement, but they are still 150 short. Aaron has to go on an official trip to Hinkley for a few days to get the remaining 150 people on board, so she calls George to take care of the kids. She meets a guy named Charles Embry, who says he used to work at Hinkley and destroyed multiple records. Ed advises her not to grill him, and let him do the talking. Charles tells Aaron that his cousin passed away the day before who had kidney tumors, no colon, and his intestines were rotting away. He says he remembers seeing him cleaning the cooling tanks at the plants, wearing masks soaked in blood. He says one day, his supervisor asked him to destroy documents that included memos about the holding pond's water and readings, but he didn't destroy all of them. Ed and Aaron go back and tell Kurt and Teresa that they got all 634 plaintiffs signed and also got internal documents that prove that pg and &E headquarters knew about the Hinkley contamination. They are all shocked but happy at the same time. A few months later, Aaron heads over to Donna 
along with George, and tells her that the judge ordered PG&E to pay $333 million and $5 million from that will be given to Donna's family. Donna starts crying and thanks Aaron. George sees this and understands why Aaron had to work so hard. Ed, while giving Aaron her bonus check, says that the money is not what they agreed on, and Aaron starts rambling about how she is not valued. She is stopped mid-sentence when she says that the check says $2 million. The end credits show that the money awarded was the largest in these types of cases. Aaron and Ed have seven cases pending, including one more against PG&E in Kettleman. That's it from the movie Aaron Brockovich. If you enjoyed it, consider subscribing. Let me know what you thought of this true story-based dramatization, and make sure to check out this next one.